Welcome to <laughs> week 10. We're doing our review week. First, just a few announcement-y things. One, you have a practice final that makes things whenever you want. If you change any number anywhere, it changes all the numbers. In order for you to edit it, you'll have to go into the file menu and make a copy because I can't let people edit the real one or if you mess up all of the secret stuff right out on the right, then it's just broken for all of us and that would be very, very sad because this took many hours to make. Okay, when you want to print one, what you can't do is just pick print because all of that secret stuff that makes it work that's grayed out on the right, it will try and print that and use up lots of ink and printer paper. So instead, remember that at the bottom, you're gonna switch anyway between the test and the answer key. So this third big wide tab says printer friendly, won't edit test and answers. Mm -hmm. So that's the one you print. Now, if you go to file print, then you can pick portrait in case it doesn't. You could fit to width, that's the right one. You can make narrow margins, fit more on the page. And now when you print it, it will actually look like a test. Nice. Not waste all your ink and paper. Perfect. You could keep printing and have the answer key. Maybe you just want to save it as a PDF. I think it always saves a PDF and then you have to load the PDF to actually print it with a printer. I'm not sure. This copy? This one, let's see if I go next. No, nah, okay, so here's where you pick. Do you want to save it as a PDF just to look at it on a screen or do you actually want to send it to a printer or something? Okay. So it depends on what you have at home. If you don't want a printer, you could just print it, one of these to a PDF and then look at it on your um, computer or phone book or tablet or whatever. Yeah. Um, the advantage of printing it to a PDF is then it stops changing. Because what will otherwise happen is you'll load up the main test page. And if we refresh this, you'll see all the numbers might change. <laughs> and then You'll do a few problems, then it's time for lunch or being with your kid or whatever, go to work, come back, and now you load it up again and it's changed everything. And not only will the problems that you started have changed, but the answer key that goes to those problems will also have updated itself to the new ones. So before you start work, use the print to PDF to make a static copy that doesn't keep changing. Okay, any questions about that source of practice? Okay, I have bad news. I checked that. Um, oh, Brenda, you have a question, yes, or that was yes to something else? I just saw the yes in chat. Something else. Okay, did I answer whatever the other thing was? Yes. Okay, then I'll keep going. My bad news is my um, the math E lead teacher, kind of my intermediate boss, doesn't have time between now and finals week to get this okayed as an actual final. There's a process that she has to go to someone else and so on because of bureaucracy. Um, so I can't give you the nice thing that says if you will next week physically come to this room or some other room downtown campus and take the final um, in person, then you will have one that you know exactly what it looks like. I will give, and there's a online version and an in-person one. The in-person one looks almost exactly like this because it's what I used to make this. Okay. Um, but I can't give you just one of these that I printed. So, oh, well, maybe next time I teach math. But you did model this one completely after that. Yes. Okay. Uh, there are very small differences. For example, in problem 3b, where you have all of these exponents smushed together, then one of these exponents will always be zero. One of them will always be negative. And because I made that happen, I don't need separate problems to test if you remember that x to the zero is one, or that x to the negative three is one over x, because I'm testing that within this one. But the exam I modeled this on has separate problems for those types of things. Um, but certainly if you are good at this practice test, then you will be good at the other test. Um, what am I going to say? So instead I have a different thing. Uh, at one point I was scheduled to teach a class, uh, Math 25, about practical math. I have a book 
factfulness, which if I want to share some about that, I can say, go to the library. Here is factfulness. It's a great book. Um, if I click on Amazon, you can see the Amazon page. Um, and if you can take the final here, then if you want, you can have a copy of Factfulness because I have a box of them in my office from this class I didn't wind up teaching. Um, it is a book that uses math, talks about how to think carefully about math, but it is not a math book. The only thing you think of when you hear the phrase math book is something that looks like a textbook. Here is a section and some problems afterwards and another section and some problem afterwards. If you've never read sort of a popular science math book of how to understand the world and things, then this will make you very happy, not only because it gives you good facts and talks about positive developments around the world, but you will feel smart reading this as compared to a technique. Yeah, this one will be yours. Because you don't have to take time. <laughs> um, Okay, other announcements. Um, please don't disappear today. Help me remember to stop class early until I know when you want to take the final. If you want to show up Thursday night, because we're just used to Tuesday, Thursday night. And if you want to take it you know, over this weekend just to get it done with because of your other finals, you know, whatever it is, there's not too many of you that I can't drop for more than one thing. Um, what I normally would do, why I like these generators, is I could say you can try it more than once. If you try it Monday and it doesn't go well, I'll just make another one. It's no work for me. Um, but since I don't have this okayed, I'm not able to make that offer. I just have one official printed copy, one official online thing to do, and that's what we'll get. Um, okay, other things. So what we have to do today, um, when I put our Miro whiteboard that I, we, I made to have review week in the main thing resources practice final. So from our class, go to welcome and syllabus, go to resources on the side, and then in the paragraph at the practice final, there's that. So whatever we build this week in the blank board, you can see. I think that's all. Will you be grading the final? Yes, I have to grade the final because okay. the class is not graded. So if you are taking time to do the final carefully, first of all, I owe it to you to tell you what you've learned and what you still need to work on. And second, there's a chance that you want this because you're trying to place into some credit class. Right. Either now or in the future, or you want to like show off to your boss or put something with a smiley face on your refrigerator so if your kids are impressed or something. Cool. Uh, so whether you're trying to feel good yourself or um, for somebody else, then it will be graded. Part of the reason I asked was just because uh, uh, I since we have to take the Moodle version, um, at least for people on Zoom or whatever, usually those are like, it automatically will tell you, if, you know, move on to the next and it'll- I think there are some short answers to the questions. So I was just making sure that, you know, if I got like half of it right, if I'd still get the partial credit or something. You know? Yeah, no, I will grade things. Um, I haven't looked at the online version of the final yet. So I am not sure what it exactly looks like, but I've noticed that the, when you go to the, Group work quizzes, not all of those are entirely self grading. So I'm guessing the final will not be self grading. Okay. Um, hi, Dusty. If you weren't here when I said things, then before we tell me when you want to do the final. Um, it doesn't have to be Tuesday or Thursday, six to eight next week. Um, that's a convenient time, but if something else is going to be a little better. I didn't, yeah. I didn't quite hear what you just said. Can you repeat that? Sure. I can be here in this room six to eight next week, Tuesday and Thursday. But there's no real class happening. It's just sort of us being here. Okay. Uh, might be taking a final. Some people might want a review time, whatever. Um, if you want to take the final at a different time, tell me if it's in person or online. 
and tell me when that is, right? If you have a lot of stuff next week and just wanna get it done on the weekend, then we can try that. If you want to wait till Wednesday or Thursday towards the end of the week, then I can grade them on Friday still, that could work, um, something like that. Okay, um, how, how do you check your total class time? So I may be interested in having um, class next week, but I'm almost at the point where I can go and get my GED taken. I just I, I need to hit a certain amount of time in the class. I'm not sure how to let you see that. That's something in Banner, our version of my lane has some instructors. So okay. sure. when you look at the grade progress in Moodle, then it doesn't tell you time. So I'm not sure how to get the time. Me so, either. Yeah, I would just call the office. Okay. Uh, I might do that tomorrow because, yeah, depending on where my time is, I will definitely like to take the or have some class time and maybe do some homework or something or something in it um, to fill out the time because I would would really like to get my GED finished before the end of the month. Okay, sounds good. Right. And good uh, link in chat because Zoom Sook is with us. Um, I'm not sure we'll see Victoria again, by the way. She took the GED at the end of last week and got more than 164. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. she is not needing the final to go on to a credit class. Maybe she is just out partying. I wasn't sure what kind of cake is a GED celebration cake, so I made some zucchini bread for the people who are here next to me. But me. There we go. Okay, um, so we need to review. We have all of our different topics. I don't know if you want to start at the topic that's most recent in memory and work our way back today and Thursday, or if we want to start at the beginning and build our way forward again. Um, I'm signed in not in my student view, but in my teacher view so that I can go to the bottom and jump to the group work quizzes and discussion forums more easily. Um, I spent a little bit of time today looking at the videos for some of the discussion forums, if you wanted to talk about those, um, or we could just do group work quiz problems, or we could do things right from the, the practice final. So whatever you want, let me know what order to do things and what would help you study. Well, I guess I would either like to start, just do a quick recap from beginning, moving to where we are now, or just working off the practice final. So um, nobody else has objections. And it sounds like we have to take a Moodle final anyway, so let's just work off this final. Uh, it'll be a printed version if you're here. Right, right, but right. um, and it, it is slightly different than the Moodle one. It will it will look much more, or at least slightly more like the practice final if you take the in person one. So that's the one I used to base things on. Okay, no other opinions of starting from beginning of term or end of term with our review. Okay, what I think I will do then is start at the beginning, and rather than jump right to the practice final, I think I will do these group work things we've been saving, um, because some people want to be able to click on the grades and things and have everything all nice and ready for, um, right, look, all my boxes are green, I can show off to my boss, right? So these are this will help you get that done. So if I just open the next one, then... Which one is that under? Yeah. Um, graphing linear equations. Oh, group work quiz. Group work quiz. I mean, each topic has a group work quiz, potentially. I think there's more topics than quizzes. Okay, so Holler, if you want to do any of these, there is an order of operations one. We talked about terms and PEMDAS weeks and weeks and weeks ago. Mm. 
Anyone want me to do question one? No, I feel pretty good about order of operations. <clears throat> okay, like terms. I'm going to do this one real quick just because I've used the words like term, but I don't know if I've explained enough examples of them. So all they mean is sort by how many exponents you have of x's and y's. So, um, x squared, which of these have other x squareds? This one has other x squareds. Plain x's, any of these have plain x's? That one. No x's or y's. Uh, there we go. An x cubed without any y's, none of those. And an x and a y without more than a to the one, right? There's like an invisible to the first power. Okay. Right. So x and y with no other things. So there's one like that. So this would be the answer to that one. Let me stick that on our Moodle in case that helps. No, uh, wait word. So the same exponent on the same letters. Solve for y, I can do that one. Yeah, I can. Yes, okay. This one, we have done lots of examples. Come on, ding, do, 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 do. <laughs> Five minus four y equals negative nineteen. I could think about getting y to the other side to make it positive, since right now it's negative. Or I could just have it stay on this side and negate both sides later on. Either strategy works. Anyone have a preference? I have a habit of making things harder for myself, so I'd probably just move the five to the other side, but I like where your head's at with the positive, so. Let's just, uh, let's now we can move the five, and that's fine. Negative five, negative five, and we get minus four y equals negative. If I owe someone 19 and I also owe someone else 5, now I owe 24 total. I have a negative 4 times y, so I need to do a divided by negative 4 on both sides. So 24 divided by 4 is 6. And the negative divided by negative means that's going to be positive. It's an equation that we solved. So we can try plugging it back in if we want. So is it true that 5 minus 4 times 6 equals negative 19? Yeah. Yeah. So, ta da, we've checked our work. Life is good. Okay. Same thing, but with fractions. The fraction game's not as strong, so. Something I mentioned at one point, but more examples can be nice. There's something called clearing the denominator. So I'm going to rewrite this with some space. One half times x plus one seventh equals five. 
So if I do uh, times two to both sides, I'm distributing the two. It's sort of like I had a two and then it goes to both of these, except I'm not writing it that way. Why a two though? Because I want to cancel out this two. Oh, I see. That's why I'm not doing times two over two because then it wouldn't cancel. And similarly, I can do a times seven, but if I do that, I have to do it everywhere, all the terms. And I wind up with seven X plus two equals 70. Then I would have take away two from both sides and divide both sides by seven. So 68 over seven, reduce it all. 9.71. So if it doesn't, then I'm supposed to take the calculator, do division, because that's what it told me to do. Uh, oh, oh, it's multiple choice, 68 over seven, there it is, okay. Other one it said do a, okay, I just draw a box. And again, you can check things. So that process was called clearing the denominator. If you see people that are good at clearing the denominator, they will not break it up quite as much. Instead, they will say, and I will do it again, they will just say, oh, we're going to do a times 14 to this side and a times 14 by this side. Where did they get the 14? Two times seven. Two times seven. If there were factors in common, you would use the least common multiple. So if this seven was a 14, it's still a 14 to multiply by. You don't need another two to make 28. And that would be the same thing. 14 divided by two is seven. 14 divided by seven is two. Five times 14 is 70. So that's how you like what? What'd you say for the seven? Um five times fourteen is seven. Oh, let's say fourteen divided by. So same as before, just much less writing. Right. So that's why people like this. It looks nice. Right. Do you have to do it this way? Yeah. No, yeah. we can do it for, the long for, way. For this is okay for me. Tell me again. Yeah, this this is too easy for me for, for this. Yeah, I use this one. Yeah, okay. Let me do it the long way once just for people that don't like clearing the denominator. And then I'll move on. Okay, so I could get my x by itself in the normal ways. Let's move the one seventh to the other side. So take away one seventh from both sides. Scoot, scoot, scoot. Okay. Then if I had one half of X is five minus one seventh, I need to do the five minus one seventh. So that would be Five times seven is 35 sevenths. Do a times seven or seven kind of thing. That looks terrible. Let me rewrite that. Minus one.
Okay, and now I do the minus one seventh. So then one half X is 34 sevenths. And then we'll do a times two to both sides. And X is 68 all over seven. So it works out fine the other way. You can do it the long way. It's not that much longer at all. Okay, back to this. Solve a proportion. Should we do this one? Proportions require you to do cross multiply. Cross multiply, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm good either way, but I'm the only one that seems to be giving it away this and stuff, so. Vincent, Brenda, Kayla, do you want me to do number five? Sure. Sure, okay. So I'm going to multiply one diagonal of the proportion. And set that equal to the other diagonal. Oops, I'm be green, there we go. So three times, I have to distribute the three. 3x plus 6. Yes, distribute the 5. Let's see, I can take 2x from both sides, or 3x from both sides. <laughs> My brain. And I can add 10 to both sides. And then I'll divide both sides by two to get x by itself. When I'm done, I can plug things in. If I put eight in, does it work? Let's check. So three over eight minus two equals five over eight plus two. So, that would be three sixths is the same as five tenths. Yep, they're both one half. I'm not going to worry about the inequalities. Um, try those at home a little. We can do some Thursday if you want. The only thing that makes inequality special is that if you multiply both sides by a negative number, then the direction of the inequality symbol switches. So you have to remember that. Otherwise, it's the same. So for example, if I had that 3x is greater and six, I could just divide by three and pretend that greater than sign is equal and everything is fine. Three X is greater than six when X is greater than two. It's that picture either way. But if I had a different example, that 3x or negative 3x is greater than um, negative 1, and I wanted to solve that, if I divide both sides or multiply both sides by a negative number, Uh, 
And it's a special thing where the direction of the greater than or equal less than sign switches. So let's think about this a little bit with our number line. Supposedly one third is the magic spot on the number line. If I have negative three, so if I have this many copies of a debt of $3, I owe $3 to you and to you and to you and to you. When am I going to have more money than negative $1? Well, if I owe one person $3, then I'm below a debt of one. I have <clears throat> and a debt of three, right? If I owe two people $3, then I would be at negative six. So, all right. so the bigger X gets, the worse I am. So X needs to be small. So X has to be smaller than a third. If I owe a third a person a $3 debt, then I'm at the negative one. And it's not equals, so it's not quite that. Same. So that's what this is saying, is I can owe a third a person or a sixth a person or an eighth of a person $3. And if that actually made sense, I wouldn't owe a whole dollar out. So. I will make a big thing. So when times or divided by negatives the this or that symbol swaps direction other than that they they are exactly like an equal sign Okay, which graph shows the solutions to y equals negative 2x plus 5? It's not a. I can just look at that and see. Why isn't it a? Because it's over the negative 2. Yeah, A has a positive slope. Right. The farther to the right we go, the bigger it's happening. We're earning money, we're earning miles, or something, right? So we want something with a negative slope. We want it to go down. So it's not A. Now B goes down, and it crosses at 5. That's the plus 5. Why is the rise over 1, 2? It goes down 2 for every 1. Yeah, it sure looks like B. Let's check C just to be sure. Nope, that's an intersect at minus five, but we want one at plus five. And D, that's a positive one, so it can't be that. C, that's a positive one, can't positive slope. So the only one that's downhill and crosses at min that crosses at positive five is B. So it's gonna be B. Okay, questions about that first group work one? When you have an inequality on a graph, mm -hmm. the open circle with the arrow means that it's going to be, the, you know, depending on which direction the arrow is going, it's going to be the less than, greater than. But yeah. then if it's a closed circle, it means to equal to, right? Right. If I had greater than, equal, that would have switched to less than equal, and I would have shaded in my circle. Yeah. Okay. It's bad language. I wouldn't phrase it like this. Because to me, a graph means you have an x and a y axis, not just a number line. But this is just a number line. Right. OK, okay you are watching me too much rather than doing group worky things, but I wasn't sure, wasn't sure what we were doing. I appreciate the comments. Two linear equations at once. Let's see this one. Another simplify. Um, the same kind of music festival thing that we did Thursday on the final. 
and it guides you through it. Should we do this one together? Yeah. I'm not going to do it bit by bit. It's your job to translate it to the silly quiz. But... Yeah, multitask. Okay, is this big enough to read for people who are looking online? I don't yes. think. Okay, now it's bigger. So we want to define our variables. We have general admission tickets and we have reserved tickets. On the practice final, by the way, it's youth tickets versus general admission. Anyway, so we have two kinds of tickets. And we have how many of them or how much they cost. So there's four things that we might be asked. Some of them they'll give us, the others we have to look for. So let's read this and see. So a ticket sales earn this much total. And there's this much price for the reserve, this much price for the general, and some proportion of things. So it looks like the information we're missing is how many tickets of each type. They give us the prices. So let's put some letters. So let something be number of reserved and let something be number. What letter should we use? I can do R for reserved and G for general. Is that okay? Okay, if you like X and Y or whatever you can, uh, you could be more modern, use emojis. Okay, R and G makes sense. So now we need two equations. There's just a rule in math that you need as many equations as you have letters. And this should make sense because you've seen how we can use the substitution method to get rid of one letter by replacing it with the other equations use of that letter. And you can keep playing that game if you had three equations and three letters in a different math class. But you will always have the easiest case. You have two letters only, so you need two equations. Okay, so now I need to reread my paragraph. Um, a total amount of ticket sales. Okay, let's make that equation. So 2,400, 24,000, I can pronounce things. 24,650 is, well, $25 for each reserved plus $15 for each general. Sound good so far? Then if the festival sold four times as many general admission as reserved. So the general admission is bigger by four. So it's the reserved times four, that's the general. There's a big temptation because if you have four times general to put four times G, but that's backwards. Is everyone okay to see why it's really four times R? Oh, because it's <laughs> the reserve seats are four times more than the general, right? Unless I am confusing myself. So four times as many. No, you're right. I am wrong. Yeah, four times G. You all let me get away with that. Four times. No, that's smaller. I'm doing four it right. Time, four times R. Uh, four times R uh, is correct. G is bigger. So we need yeah. four times. The smaller thing makes a bigger one. Yeah, I did it right. Okay. If I stare at it too long, I double think myself. Okay, so we want to solve for one letter all by itself. And in fact, we already have that, right? G is 4R. So I can just take this 4R 
and plug it into that G, because G is 4R. So I've taken two equations with two letters and turned them into one equation with one letter. Let's write that. I'm also going to stop writing the dollar sign because we're sort of just at the do things phase. I will write lots of steps because I'm lecturing. You could combine these steps if you want. 15 and 15 is 30. Another 1545, another 1560. If I have 25 Rs and 60 Rs, how many Rs do I have? Did I last number? If I have 25 Rs and 60 more Rs, how many Rs do I have? 85. Okay. Something stuck on to R with times 85. So let's do divided by 85. And somebody with a calculator, let me know what this is. Yeah, 290. 290? Yep. No. I should actually say reserve tickets. Then we need to find how many general tickets. So we have we four R. Four times R. And so four times two ninety. So it's three hundred. One one six two eight. One one six zero. We take away 10 four times from 1,200. That's sort of 10 less than 300. And I can double check this. I could plug in that many tickets at that price per ticket and see if it comes out to the 24,650. This is very much like the practice final one with word problem at the end. The ice rink sold tickets. This one's actually a little easier because the part that messed at least me up was the, is it four times R or is it G four times G? And we don't have to think about that with this one. It's just the total tickets. G plus R or Y plus G or however your name is 37. Okay, skipping ahead, which is standard form? Well, y. y equal MX plus B. That's MX plus B, yeah, slope. that one is the standard slope intercept. Oh, see that? Oh, no, standard form is this one. Oh, okay. It? Standard form is that one. I'm In my brain, I think this is the most standard, but officially the one called standard form is okay. AX plus BY. Well, I was just going to say, if that was right, then that's going to confuse. Oh. Yeah, so this I is, this is I have... form. Yeah, but... This is standard form. Okay. This one is... Oh. Um, that one, I think, is a distraction. That one, I think, is called point yeah. slope, actually. Okay, how do you graph an equation? Should we do that one? Um, sure. Can I make this bigger in a way that, yes, doesn't wrap the equation? Um, I'm going to. Graphing the near equations, open a new tab. Only tabs better. And <clears throat> the whiteboard. Okay. 
apparatus. No, I don't want to do that. I want to grab a graph. Oh, okay. Copy. Paste. Okay, so if you are like me, your first thing is to try and put this into slope intercept form. That is so much my habit that I just misspoke and said this was called standard, even though it's not standard. So I want y equals mx plus b. Well, yeah. technically, there's not a spot on the final where it asks you to explain a process, right? Don't think so. But you're supposed to show your work. So sure. yeah. you have to do enough steps. So I want the Y by itself. Let's put the Y on the other side. That will change it from negative to positive, negative to positive. And it looks like we're going to take the 12 and move it to the other side. Not y, four y. And I want to get y by itself. <clears throat> so we're going to divide by four on this side. And we're going to divide by four on that side, and we'll have to distribute it to both, right? Yes. So two divided by four is one and a half. Twelve divided by four is three. So here we do. If it helps you, you can put the y equals on the other side. It doesn't actually matter where you write it. That looks better. OK, so we have a slope of 1 half and a y-intercept of negative 3. So what's my first thing to do on my nice graph paper? Put a uh, point, negative three. Put, put three. It equals zero. Whoops, I'm doing wrong. Zero and negative. Okay, there's my point at negative three. And then we follow rise over run. Yeah. Which would, in this case, would be one over two. So let me write Starting that again. That point. So rise over run is one over two. So I'm going to go up one over positive two. Up one over positive two. That looks nice. Up one over positive two. One, two, three, four. So it looks like this point is six comma zero. Does that work? If I plug six in for x, half of six minus three, is that zero? Yes. Yeah. I didn't have to do my green method, by the way. Some people will say, I'm just going to plug in another number for x and get a second point. Let me get a different color. I could try. x equals 2, because 2 times 1 half is going to be nice. So that would give me this point right away. Hmm. Rise over run also gave me that point. It doesn't matter. As long as you have two points and reasonable artistic skills, you can draw the line. Here's the reasonable artistic skills go. Okay, there we go. I did more than one point just because I knew it was going to hit the x-axis at an even number, and I want to plug it in to check. Because anything I can do to quickly check that I'm thinking correctly on the test, I like to do. As you've seen, I make brain farts all the time. So there we go. Get y equals mxb. Plug in the y-intercept, because that one's really easy. And then either use the slope to get a second point, 
or plug in an X value to get the second point and connect the dots. So even though it says explain the steps you'd go through, would it also be acceptable just to write? Yeah, all on the actual final, you'll just have to do it. Um, I'm pretty sure. Maybe not. Maybe the Moodle one, because I haven't looked at it, is like this. They're just reusing this problem. I did not put that past. Um, well, that was ugly. I got the right one. Okay. True or false? If I plug something in, does it work? No. Always. Well, let's plug it in. If I put in 4 for y, so a minus 8, negative 2, Minus eight more is negative 10. Mm. I could write more, but I think we can plug points. In. Right. Another match thing is now they're not putting it in y equals mx plus b form. So you have to rearrange it first and then pick the right graph. Looking at this, is my slope going to be positive or negative? Positive. Oh, you sorry, your slope, your y intercept would be positive. I would say the other way. If I move the y from the left to the right, it's going to be positive. Then I'll move the 6 from the right to the left, and it's going oh. to be negative. Don't do too much in your head. So if I look here, then I'm going to have 3x minus y equals 6. First, I'll move the y to the other side. It will become positive. Then I'll move the 6 to this side. It becomes negative. So I have a positive slope. And it's reasonably steep at three. It goes up three for every one we go across. And we have a negative y-intercept. And that's usually enough for this kind of multiple choice problem. So there we go. Steep at negative six. That looks great. Negative slope, no. Negative slope, no. Negative slope, no. So there we go. Write an equation in slope intercept form. Well, we just did that. I'm not quite sure why they would ask you that last. It seems like the easiest thing to do first. Okay, questions on the second one. No, it is seven. Anyone want to take a break? We can take a break. Arithmetic with polynomial. OK, if no one wants a break, I want some zucchini bread. So I'll do a very quick. We're now on reviewing the arithmetic with polynomials thing. Um, solve for y. Should we see if we actually sure. learned anything from that clearing the denominator talk? Okay, I will rewrite that so it looks nicer. Y over four plus Y over five equals seven nights. <coughs> so I want to multiply both sides by something. If I multiply it by 20, it's four times five. Because that's four times five, that's going to make the denominators with the letter go away. So that's probably a good place to start. 
So I will distribute the 20 in both places. 20 times y over four, the four is gonna cancel out part of the 20 and we'll get a five left over. And similarly, 20 divided by five leaves a four left over. And we get 20 over one, seven times two is 14 with another zero. So nine y equals 140 over my Okay. I could multiply both sides by nine to get rid of all the fractions, but I want to get y by itself. That's my main goal. So I think I'm going to just give up on getting rid of all the fractions. And how do we divide by nine over one? We flip it and multiply. Can I reduce anything? Remember our divisibility tricks. If I add up one plus four plus zero, do I get something that is divisible by three? No, three does not go into five. So three does not go into 140. So I am just stuck. There's nothing I can do to reduce that. Okay, there's some input-output pairs. What's the slope? Change in y over change in x. Should I do this one or are we good at this? I'm cool with reviewing everything, but no one <laughs> else is saying it. No one else is saying it. Doesn't take long. So I have an advantage here of color coding because what people will do wrong here is with subtraction, right? You want one Y minus the other Y and one X minus the other X. And this is one coordinate pair and this is the other, right? So what's going to mess people up if they mess something up is when you plug a negative into one that's being subtracted and forget that the minus minus becomes a positive. Right. Does that make sense? What is that formula called again? Set this. Um, slope change in y over change in x. Rise over run. I thought the slope formula was the y equals mx plus b. Uh, that's the slope form of an slope equation. Form. This is how to get the slope in the first place. So th the easiest way to avoid this is if one of the coordinate pairs has no negatives, put that one in for the second choices, because then you won't have minus a negative and make that common mistake. So my pr preference would be to use this pair, six comma zero, Make that x1, I'm sorry, x2 and y2. So that I'm never subtracting negatives. And that means this pair of 0, comma, negative 2 is the one I will put in for x1 and y1. So I will just do that and then ask if you have questions. So what's the first one? A negative two and a zero, x1, y1, and then take away this other one, the zero and the six. So I get negative two over negative six, so one third. If I do a very quick check, six, zero, and zero, negative two. Am I going to get a fairly flat, but positive slope? 
Yeah, that seems reasonable. Do -do -do. Write an equation with this slope and this point. Do that one. Well, getting started is easy. We know we want y equals mx plus b. There are there is, by the way, shortcuts to this using the other format of lines, but I'm not going to do that because that's stupid. No one uses those format statements. So, so we want y equals mx plus b. The slope is negative three. Right. So here that then what else well we have a specific x and y so let's plug those in so the y is four the x is one So four minus equals negative three plus B, and three to both sides. And we get seven equals B. So then we can go back up, bring those two ideas together. Y equals negative three X plus seven. That's a lot faster and simpler than trying to memorize some other format of linear equations. If it asked me to graph this, it didn't, but if it did, then I would say, oh, it crosses at seven. And it goes down pretty steep. If I go over one, now I'm down three, so I'm up four. There's a sketch of my line. Questions on that one? Hmm. Okay, solve systems of equations. Let's do the one that's more complicated. We've done bunches of these, but I can do one more. We even did one with the ticket sales a moment ago. So I have these two equations. I need to get either fidget with them so that we can add or subtract them and something disappears or I need to have one of them with one of the letters all by itself. In this case, both of them already have one of the letters by itself. So that sounds pretty good. We could take the three X minus four and put that in for Y in the other one, because that's what Y is. So I get three X minus four is one half X plus one. So it looks like I should take away a half X on both sides. And I can add four to both sides. And I get two and a half X. So I'm just gonna write that as 2.5 equals one plus four is five. X equals five divided by 2.5. This would be easier to do in your head if we left a fraction, but that's okay. We can do five divided by 2.5, two. Does that make sense, by the way? 
there's two 2.5s and five, and I had five things, and I made piles of 2.5. Oops, I'm not done though. So then I need to pick one of the two equations and plug this in to get y. So I'm going to pick this one because that looks really easy. y is 1 half times 2 plus 1. So 1 plus 1 equals 2. So 2 comma 2. I want to check this. If I plug in 2, 6 minus 4 is 2, that works. So I plug in 2, 1 plus 1 is 2, that works. So, put it on. Sweet. Okay. Um, blah, blah, blah. They give you Y already. Just plug it in. Um, another ticket sales. Can we get a different problem? Let's save number seven for Thursday. If you want me to do this one Thursday, I will, but let's see if you can do it at home first. No, that's fine. I was uh, just thinking about it with number eight there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Combining the exponents, keep getting, uh, like I always think I have it, and then I get thrown off because it switches from multiplication to addition. Right. For the P is two plus three is five, and for the Q's, 4 plus 2 is 6, right. and there's 1R, so it's going to be a... I'm surprised they didn't have one with the Q's being 8. So if you multiplied it incorrectly, instead of adding it, you'd get... Mm. They're not being as tricky as they could be. When you have something to an exponent, that's when you multiply. Let's do this one just in case somebody was absent that day. This, first of all, this doesn't look as nice on Moodle. These exponents all look kind of at the same level, if that makes sense. Right. If I was to write this on paper, I would write m to the fourth, n cubed, and then all of that squared. And this too is a different height, maybe even slightly bigger mm -hmm. than the others. Because right? what that means is I have this stuff in the parentheses twice. I have one of those, and then I multiply it by another one of those. <clears throat> now I have the previous things. If everything is <laughs> multiplied, then the exponent over m adds 4 plus 4 is 8. The exponent over n adds 3 plus 3 is 6. But the shortcut is to say, oh, 4 times 2 is 8. 3 times 2 is 6. OK. And you see why that <clears throat> shortcut works. Yes. You have two copies of the three. You have two copies of one. Okay. Anything to the zero is what? One. That's a nice, easy point if it's on the way. That was arithmetic with polynomials. We just did like three weeks worth of stuff plus a snow week in an hour and a half. Good for us. Okay, factoring. Uh, simplify, that's a good one to do. We've done a few of these, but not as many as we could have. First, let's do the shortcut. The shortcuts make us happy. What's going to happen with a to the eighth on top and then a squared on the bottom? Mm 
one. Minus. Minus, right? So this is going to go away completely, and that's going to turn into a six. How about the bees? Still at three. Yeah, six minus three is three. We're still subtracting. So we wind up with a to the six, b cubed, c squared. And that's all there is to it. Why does that work? Because I started out with eight a's. And six B's and two C's. I can move all of that over because I am getting crowded. Mm -hmm. And on the bottom, I had two A's and three B's. So that one canceled. That one canceled. Can you see the minus happening for how many A's there are? And that one canceled. That one cancels. And you see, we took away three Bs, minus three from top to bottom. So yes. that's why you minus. Okay, put it over there. Subtracting. I would have made this one trickier. Which quiz are you on? Which quiz am I on? Mm -hmm. um, the one that says factoring plain polynomials. Um, so where did I get that from? Let's see, factoring polynomials probably. Oh, no, there's two of them. Yeah, I think I just picked on the wrong one because I'm not factoring tricky polynomials. Yeah, we'll do that next. Yes, that one. Okay, but we're on the plain ones. So if I'm subtracting these. Well, if I'm just subtracting numbers like eight minus five, I like writing them one on top of each other. So let's do that. Eight X cubed plus five X squared minus four X plus three, and I'm gonna subtract a two X squared, no cubed, minus a three X squared plus two X minus seven. So since I am subtracting, that helps me remember that if I'm subtracting a negative, it's positive and so on. If you try to do this straight line all across horizontally, you can, but just remember to distribute that negative sign in, in front of every term. That makes sense? On the, on the other side. Yeah, so this would be negative, positive, negative, positive, once I distribute. Okay, anyway, eight minus two is six of these X cubes. Five minus a debt of three, so three more than I had before, is eight X squared. In debt, four X's, and then I take away two more X's. Now I'm in debt, six X's. And three minus a negative seven, that's a positive 10. Oh, I forgot for a moment we were doing a subtraction problem. Yeah. So if I was to write this problem, I would take one of these terms and just get rid of it. Because it becomes much trickier if one of the polynomials has terms the other one doesn't. In exactly the same way that if I'm just subtracting numbers, if I do 102 minus 81, that's trickier than if I do 192 minus 81. I have to think about something that's not there. But they were nice. They did not do all of them. They did not make any of them missing. 
Okay, multiply. Can we distribute 6v to this? What's 6v times 2v? 12v. Or 6 times 2. 6 times 2 is 12, oh, and yeah. then v times v is v squared. v squared. So 12v squared plus 3 times 6v. So then you're going to have uh, 6, 12, and Eighteen. Eighteen Vs. And don't leave off the V in the beginning. So if it helps, as again, a big test taking strategy is avoid careless mistakes. If it helps, then just write all the steps. Don't skip any. Say six V times two V plus the 6v times the 3. Then it's a lot easier to see that this isn't just 12 with 1v, but 12 with v squared, because there's a v times v. And 6 times 3 is 18, and I'm not going to leave off that v. It's right there. So if these little arrows to help you remember to distribute aren't enough, then write the 6v both times. It doesn't take much longer prevents careless mistakes. Okay, lots of distributing. Same thing, if you write the three x squared, a copy of it in front of each of the four things, then it's much easier to be careful. If you're trying to distribute it all in your head, then there's four things you're trying to do in your head. And even if you get Three quarters of your math correct, you're going to miss one of them. You want me to write out this one? <laughs> if you're on fire because you've been doing this homework all the time in the past few days, then you can try it in your head and probably do fine. But how often do we really do this? So I would take my 3x squared and make four copies of it. So there's one times the negative 2x cubed. Oh, come on, thanks, keep working. Okay, now you're not. No, oh, you are jumping. Stop jumping. And then we have one times a positive x squared. Uh, sorry, I am groaning. Refresh and get better. Oh, Miro, boom. Must be better. Okay, so no, it's still jumping back. Not even letting me write. So. Mirror on this. Okay, there we go. Knowledge resolved. Okay. And then we have a minus 4x 
So that with a minus 4x and a 6. Everyone OK with my distributing the long way? So now I can do each term separately. 3, negative 2 is minus 6. How many x's? 2 plus 3 is 5. Second term is just a 3. 2 and 2 is 4x's. 3 and minus 4 is a minus 12. 3 x's total. 3 times 6 is 18. Uh, x squared. Draw. You just forget the parentheses on those other ones. Uh, if it wasn't negative, then I don't really need to write it. Oh. You know, honestly, if I was just doing this as my own homework, I probably would make this a minus sign and not put the parentheses on. I would just notice that there's a minus sign there and know where to put it. But I'm pretending that I'm rusty. So I'm doing it as straightforward as possible. If it if you want to put parentheses, it doesn't hurt anything. You certainly can. They don't do anything. Okay. Uh foil. Should we do some foiling? Why not? Why not? Let's do the harder one. I mean, I would ask the class, but... No one is complaining, so that makes me think Vincent and Brenda and Kayla and Dusty, at least three out of the four of them, are very happy that we're doing this. Okay, and after this, I should stop to get some time to talk about schedule and minus. So remember, the reason we do FOIL is that we are drawing a box. So if we had AX plus B as like a length, and CX plus D as like a width, and we multiply to find the area, the top has cx times ax, so ac x squared. The top right corner has a b times cx. Bottom on the left has an ax times d. The last one is b times d. So if I was to write this horizontally, then the ax times the cx, that's the first of both. The ax times the d, that's the outside of both. The B times the CX, that's the inside for both. And the B times the D, that's the last. So that's where that FOIL acronym comes from. But we can just do this. So I like to actually write out F-O-I-L. So first, 2X times 3X, 6 x squared outside 2x times a negative 5 is a negative 10x inside 1 times 3x is 3x and last negative 5 times 1 then these are both plain x's combine like terms and we're done I review the box because maybe you get something like this. This one has an x squared. And 
And I don't want you to think that you haven't learned any good math and you have to go home and be scared. And if you could do the same thing, just make a bigger box and do all the pieces. You could figure that out. You don't have to right now, but you are smart enough to do this kind of thing. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording and ask about final exam scheduling.